Hey, how you doing? This is Ziggy. This is 17 Minutes in History. kind of story we're going a little gritty we go, we going a little real right now and we have man Ziggy and Ziggy's gonna tell you some stuff that went on you know during the Reagan era you know when he was out there you know what I'm saying in Bavaria and he was out there in Germany and I'm gonna just let him tell it go ahead man tell your thing all right hey my name is Sigmund Worthley listen I was at a station with 1st Battalion, 68th Armor, Silver Lions, okay? We were stationed in Wild Lake, Germany. Up there in the mountains, two miles above, I don't know, sea level, whatever. We were always in the clouds. It wasn't fog. We lived in the clouds. It was an isolation base. Basically, the SS of, from the Nazis in the 40s lived there. And they had Polish prisoners and slaves and things of that nature. And it was a secret base. It wasn't on any German maps at the time. Nobody could find it. They called us the Ghost Battalion. Why? Because we didn't exist. Nobody knew we were there. Because they used to pull the trees over the tops of the buildings when reconnaissance used to fly over. And we would disappear. We were hidden totally. Okay? It was like the most hidden place you can go on earth but we persevered and we came through those things but our main mission was to back up the 2nd 11th ACR cavalry up in Fulda. What was their job? 2nd 11th ACR is cavalry. That's helicopters and tanks. Crazy sons of bitches. And what did they do? Uh, I they mean what was this mission that you're backing them up on? This specific oh, mission that you're telling the story about? Kill Russians okay. basically. If the Russians come through the Folder Gap, this Folder Gap through history is the only place that the Russians could come through to conquer Europe and come through in that part of Bavaria. And that's what we guarded. And we were the only backup to the 2nd 11th ACR. And once they failed... What's their 7th 11th ACR? 2nd 11th ACR is 2nd Cavalry ACR. Um, Armored Cavalry Unit. Okay. So... And we were 1st 68th Armor. So basically what uh, we would do, we'd back them up. After they get wiped out, it's our time to get wiped out. We were outnumbered 18 to 1. When the Russians come, that's what our job Obviously was. Obviously that didn't happen because you're no. here today to tell the story. Ronald Reagan, hey, need I say more no more. Ronald Reagan arranged things, but things was happening at that time. He got shot. We lived in the woods for 30 days. We didn't know who was in charge. Alexander Haig telling us he's in charge. We don't know what's going on. So you on. went through that whole thing where there was confusion where the Mask. secretary, these, was he secretary of state or secretary of He defense? was defense. Secretary of, and he just took over the radio. He took over. He shot. said, I'm in charge. And he and didn't have the right to say that. No, he did not. And scared the hell out of everybody. So how was that? For you, in terms of you're out there and this man is, t is trying to take over, at the same time, he doesn't have the right under the Constitution to do that. So well, how, how was that for you? you? Who were you listening to? We didn't listen to nobody. What we listened to, I had my code books and I had my firing pins. And what I did, I went to my objectives. I didn't care who told me what. I took my crew and I took my tank and I went to those objectives and I waited and I stayed there until I got word that we stand down, we don't attack, we don't fire, we don't do this, or we don't do that. And you know what? I don't care, you know, people say, oh, you've been in combat or whatever. You don't know, I mean, every day, that you have to just wait, wait, wait. Now, why, now the people, your, your, your colleagues, your, the, your fellow soldiers, now while this is going on, what, what is the anxiety? What is the pressure when you're waiting for you're waiting for a directive, you're waiting Everybody, for an order, and nobody knows what that order is going to be? How, how, they, how is there is there what, high level of stress? What, what they're doing is they're looking toward you because you're highest ranking on tank. You are the man. What are we gonna do? 
What's going on? You get the firing pins. I got two firing pins. I got 63 rounds of ammo. I got code books telling me where to go. I got maps. I map it out. Okay, I'm supposed to pull my tank up, observe the uh, objective, fire two rounds on some church, a steeple, as they said, this in this town that was close by. If you see a smoke round on that steeple, I back up. I go to my secondary position and I start fighting them and then I keep pulling back, keep pulling back till I have no more ammo and then our doctrine was we're gonna nuke them. We're gonna take a tactical nuke and we're gonna nuke the Russians coming through the gap. We will not let them come through that part of Europe ever again. Mm, okay. And that was it. And now at that time, who was the president? Um, Prime Minister I, I served. I like served. That was no, the, no, I served under Jimmy Carter, and then I uh, served under in Russia. and Ronald Reagan. So it was Gorbachev. Gorbachev. Okay. And uh, that was it. Just gonna nuke them, and nobody's going home. You're not going home. You're gonna die here. We already accepted it, so we're gonna fight like hell. Now, now you, Zig, you might have accepted it. Do, did you have people, my people that might have, no, people that started out that way, but as you seen how the shit got real, did you have, did you have some of your, the, your, your soldiers? Some people freaked like, out. Yeah, some that's people, what I mean. So what yeah, is that like? Some you people, have to, what, how, do, what, how do you calm those type of people down there? They, uh, they, they want out right now. You gotta grab them by the throat and tell them, yo, this is it, man. Yo, this is what the fuck you signed up for, and stop bullshitting. Yo. You gonna have if we gonna die, we're gonna die together, and this is it. We're outnumbered 18 to 1. We were outnumbered 18 to 1. Now by average, see, by average. I, I, I got do, 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 depending on, on the okay. war and deployment, is that a normal my or battalion, could, it be, it could it be bigger than that? No, my battalion, 54 tanks. Imagine I got 54 tanks up on the Russian border. I got 154 coming at me. Wow. So you know what? We take out as many as we can. That was a, that was what the plan was. This is the United States military. This is the plan. Shoot as many as you can and keep falling back. And keep falling back. And then when you run out of ammo. Now you're, do you, are you able at that point we so, you, so can you can you at any point when you feel that you need to retreat or you know because of that can you call and say listen we need more people how do how do you do that how do you get backup how do you get you call you call in airstrikes you call in Artie Artie comes in sector five you know I got a section for you boom 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 I'll call an artillery as long as they can last because the base I was stationed at in Wildflecker. Was, you never showed where Wild, Wild Flickin was Wild Flickin is a secret base. Where? In Bavaria. Okay. okay. So, so the for the Bavaria. record, that's, that's Germany. It's, it's in the Bavaria Mountains. Basically, um, it was under the umbrella of Russian artillery. When I first got there as a recruit, and, I mean a first timer, and I'm coming in, and I just left Frankfurt, I came in, and I sat there. This is also in Germany. Yeah, I uh, came in the 21st replacement at Rhineline Air Base. And I says, I looked at the door, there was, you know, you know, you know, exits and things of that nature in a building. I says, I saw a sign, it said impact area. I said, what is this impact area? They say, we're in range of Russian artillery. So... That impact area is us. They can blow us away anytime they want, day or night. Really? I was like, so wait a minute, man. So we're just sitting ducks until something starts and then we can retaliate. Now your mindset at that point, knowing or what you knowing, I mean, how do you deal, how do you deal, how you deal with deal that with when, it? You, when you're saying, yo, what, they, can, what? they can hit us, they can hit but us. How, do you, how do you go forward? What do you how do, do? You go forward every day? What we did? with our jobs, we did what we did, but when we got time off, we got highly screwed up, drunk, everything, Very so because true. every day, you don't know if you're going to live or die. But you live life to the fullest. We signed up for it. No, 
no, no repercussions. No, I don't regret it. No, absolutely not. It's what I signed for to serve my country. But I didn't know I was going to be on that front line like that. And everybody go oh, Afghanistan, Iraq, and all this bullshit. Yeah. Okay. But didn't so, all that stuff kind of like come later? Yeah. yeah, yeah for I you, trained for you anyway. Yeah, for me. Yeah, I yeah. trained troops. For, there were other for those, focuses for those at things. that point. You know, militarily than you know Pakistan and all that. That yeah. wasn't happening in the eighties. No, no, in the eighties, no. But what was it? Where, 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 where were the points of interest for the government at that point? At that point, getting the troops out of uh, oh, well, we had the Iranian hostage okay. crisis. Okay. We had to get that out. That was Carter's failure. Yeah. Then Reagan came in, and what he did, he started building us up, giving us weaponry, giving us. Night manpower. Oh my God, we got uh, night vision. Okay, a lot sight. of equipment. How about, oh, how about manpower? He built up. Yeah, every at, we, where we were short lived, we got people. I, you know, I had a three man crew. Where I was a tank, you need four men. Now, who 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 was joint op, joint chiefs at that time? Who were the? Oh, that the was Alexander Haig. Alexander Haig. Oh, the else? Mad who Bomber. Else, who else was? Well, now, what was Colin Powell at Colin Powell? Colin Powell. He was quiet. He was not around at that time. Oh, he was real oh, quiet. He was, he was oh, low somewhere level. else. Yeah, okay. he was low level. Okay, okay. Oh, it was Reagan boys with um, uh, Colonel uh, what's that? Uh, the what the Nicaragua? No, no Nicaragua guy. Uh, no, that's a good Ollie North. Oliver North. Yeah, okay. Ollie North. Yeah, all those guys. <sighs> oh, please. Okay, okay, okay. You know, so we got what we wanted, but we didn't know what was going on the outside. They kept giving us, but they cut everybody else short in America. They took away a whole lot of stuff, and they gave it to the military, which I was happy. Because now, that's a whole lot of stuff that they cut. You mean cut from the American citizen to, to yes. bolster the military? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they took all, anything you could get that you needed, it went to the military. And, you know, and I was... And you guys needed it. I mean, you oh, fight no, the war out there. No, we, we needed it to a point. And I was pissed because I got caught in a thing called... The Reagan Freeze. A lot of people don't know about the Reagan Freeze. The Reagan Freeze was uh, you could not advance in rank because they had so many above you at that same rank that was still in. And they were waiting for them to either leave or advance them to another rank. And I was stuck. And they kept calling it Reaganomics. I'm like, well, you know what? I didn't sign up for this shit, Reaganomics. I belong, I'm, I'm supposed to be sergeant right now. Well, we can't promote you to this, uh, because we're backed up. We're just like a corporation. Well, what does that mean, backed up? They were you backed up. Terms. They had too many guys at that same rank that you were trying to achieve. So you had to wait until they get rid of those guys to move you up. So that means everybody, there was they, all these, all these soldiers was all promotions. Waiting. Yeah, waiting. Just all we were, okay. we were waiting, okay. and we have been older for a long time, sitting there, experienced everything, and we're getting jerked around until they promote the guys that are in front of us or get them out. And that's what they were doing. They were getting them out, throwing, throwing them out, basically. Get the fuck out. Now, how, how would you throw someone out of the military oh, they, where know, it stuck? Oh, they, it, they, would, they would call yeah. them gay. They would, uh, uh, drugs. Anything. Anything just to... Was a lot of it legitimate? Yeah, it was. Back then? Hell yeah. Okay, so, so it was like, a, so it was a fishing position oh, yeah. to find the people that legitimately get, they could throw them out because it had to stick. Get them out. Want, yeah. and, and promote the guys who actually deserve it, which was, I was one of them. Which I was like, God damn, you know, it's time, it's my time. Why am I not getting my promotion? I'm stuck at this damn rank. This is ridiculous. Okay. You know, I might have stayed 20 years if you would have promoted me on time, got my money. They didn't give me retroactive. No, I got my rank as soon as I got off the plane in California in the Mojave Desert. My captain came to me and says, I'm sorry for what happened to you. I'm promoting you right now. Put my damn things. Chevron's on, right, hit me right off, right. Chevron's. Yeah, I said right away? Right away. Wow. And says, yo, you are, I want you to be my gunner. I says, Cap, you got it. I was the only overseas candidate that came off that plane 
He didn't have anybody from overseas, and he was a Vietnam vet. He didn't trust guys in the States. He wanted somebody that had been out. What experience? In which I was. Oh, for, and, so and wouldn't you in that in that situation if you're making decisions like that? I don't, like want, that, no, I want, I don't I want, want no. I don't want no novice. Agree. I don't want you right. I don't want no novice. You stay away from me. And this is that's just the way it is. It's not a disrespect to a person's persona or whatever. Way you just go ahead. Well, we're talking about a dangerous go game. Er, here. We're go talking earn about it. we're talking go. about a dangerous game where people's lives Life are at risk. Yes. And no disrespect, but I have to go with experience because you know something? When when we're talking about things happening, and when it really comes down to it, those with no experience, they're going to fold. And I can't have that after I've already experienced that. So I, I, I have to go with who is experienced, not green. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Because what I did not respect was, I, didn't, it, it, I always teamed up with the guys who came out of Nam. All the Vietnam guys. You think that was by I, accident or no. that or something like that? I, they, they, I, that was I, searched, I searched him out. Purposely. Yo, he was not. Okay, I respect you. No, tell me about so and so, so and so. You know, I picked their fucking brains. I did not want to go. I ain't going with somebody green. You ain't been under fire. Motherfucker, you don't know what the hell, what is what. Right, right. So, my captain used to be on the fire. He was in there. He, his ass was in the shit, as we say. And he picked me. He called me. I want you to be my gunner. I'll be your gunner. That's a privilege. Oh, yeah. I'm Captain Gunner. Yo, don't fuck with me. That's it. That's Captain Gunner. <laughs> Period. Hands off. Go kiss my ass. I had any privilege you want. I was like, yo. I was like, Hollywood Housewives. Don't fuck with me, <laughs> yo. <laughs> yeah, yo, but that's how I had it. 